Hey guys, welcome back to our small block Ford dream engine build. Today we're going to be talking about some of the machine work that went on here and uh, we're going to be prepping this block to get this thing all kicked off, so stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Greg, this is Chris. Today we're going to be kind of going back over some of the machine work that we did on this uh, World Products Man of War uh, small block Ford block. Um, as well as talking about some of the other machine work that uh, you know we're going to be doing on the project. And Chris is going to be getting into setting this whole block up for assembly and getting it all prepped. So Chris, you know, why don't you walk folks through some of the machine work that was done mm -hmm. here on the block. I know you guys work with a local machine shop. So. Yeah, yeah, we work with Canton Automo Machine out of Canton, Ohio, and they're a good, they're a good local machine shop that does all kinds of engine machine work, and so we've got a good relationship for over the years, and just use them for when we need anything done, block related typically, or mm -hmm. valve jobs, stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, when you get a new block like this, it doesn't just come ready to go. You know, you gotta now look at what piston size you have, what sort of clearance you want for your piston to wall clearance, and so then you have to hone it to size of course and then the deck surface is not always the exact size they give you usually a couple thou this is a 9500 small mm -hmm. block forward um so you know you might have a couple thou over that to get you back to what you know you would call either a zero or how far you want the piston the hole those kinds of things you work out mathematically when you buy all your parts right right in yeah. our case you know we did it so that we went with as long as a rod as we could get, so we like the we like the taller decks, mm -hmm. just like that's the trend with all your big race stuff is to yeah. get that nice tall deck, right? And we have a six two hundred rod. Is it? Yeah, six two hundred rod, yeah. so a little bit longer than like a six one twenty five. This is pretty normal, especially in Chevy LS world and all that. But yeah. we use six one twenty five quite a bit, and then with the four inch stroke. So this particular block is actually set up so you go to like a four two fifty stroke. Or yeah, four two fifty. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it's what they can go up to, and it's clearance for all that, and so it comes already done. So you don't have to do a ton of clearancing. Is the beauty on this block? The only thing we would typically do is just a little bit of deburring, which I kind of already did some of that before I sent it out to get machined. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the first thing I did, just yep. get that messy work. Now what I'll do is I'll break this edge on here. Yep. So we'll do that next. But now it's a matter of okay, we got everything to size. Um, after I clean this block all up, I will do some checks on it, you know, and I will double check the machine work and I'll double check what the piston, the walk, you know, clearance is, um, got all the gauges here to check everything. Cause you know, it, as good as machine shops are, it's, you got to do your due diligence and don't make assumptions, mm -hmm. right? Just like checking, you know, what your bearing clearance is going to be on your mains. You know, we check the line bore on the mains too. You always want to check all these things. It's a brand new block. You still want to check it all. You can't assume anything. Yep. So we'll do all those checks on it as well, um, you know, and do and we'll, we'll just make mic everything and make sure everything's within the specs that we want. Okay, and then go down that road. But first, we got to get the block clean. We do need to paint this block because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like the old blocks where everything was cast iron, right? Yeah. You know, so you had cast iron heads, cast iron intake or anything, and you just paint the whole thing. Where this is mostly aluminum. Except for the block, so we got to paint the block separately. So it's a little tedious because you know we want to plug all the holes, tape off what we don't want painted, yep. and the machine surfaces, and then just spray it. We'll probably do Ford Blue because you know we'll keep with tradition, I guess. Right, right. And I was, I don't want to hear the gripes of people saying, "Oh my gosh, that's blasphemy! You painted it to some <laughs> other goofy color." You, you, you know? can't win, right? No <laughs> matter what, someone's going to be <laughs> right. upset. But right. I think the blue is going to look really sweet with uh, the, you know the rest of the parts on this engine and. Uh, yeah, as Chris just mentioned, we got a decent amount of work to get through today, so uh, stay tuned. Chris is going to be showing you, you know, how he's getting this block prepared for assembly. So normally, you know, when you're taking your caps off, you want to make sure you put them in the right spot. A lot of your good newer blocks, they all come marked. So the arrow points to the front, number four main. So you got one, two, three, four, five. And so obviously the arrow's to the front because you want to make sure your bore is exactly the way it was machined when this was all machined. These were machined in spot. It could be different between the caps. So you got to make sure you keep them in the same order all the time. You 
barely just gotta touch it. That's it. Do this one one more time. I gotta go down the wash bay, flip it over, and then um, put my sling through the cam bore, and then we'll wash it in the final rinse. And see, this is where your trusty uh, serpentine belts work really nice. Everybody in the world's going to go, serpentine belt, that's a good idea. I never thought of using a serpentine belt for that stuff. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize because it's you know typically soft and it's not gonna scratch up stuff, right? So it's uh, we've been using. Sur I, I'll be honest. I mean, my dad used serpentine belts for ever since they came out for stuff like this. I mean, it just became a nice, easy solution for picking up things like this. See how pristine and shiny it is? Look at that. <laughs> uh huh. Alright, so after we get done rinsing it all off, obviously, this block has to go to get painted. So I'm not going to oil all of my surfaces right now because i got to clean them all back off to get the tape sticks to it, stick to it. But we always use the training fluid. Training fluid is just a nice, nice detergent-based type lubrication that works good for just your surfaces. So we just, oh, we've just we used training fluid, literally. That's all I've ever used. That's all I ever learned on from my dad was training fluid for wiping down the cylinder boards because you're going to do a final you know, wipe down before you assemble it anyway, but just to keep it from rusting over is all you're trying to do. All right, guys, you just watched Chris clean the block using the ultrasonic, getting it all uh, spick and span, and uh, yeah. now he's going to prep the block for some paint work. So we got to tape up some stuff that we don't want, uh, some of that Ford blue getting into. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Chris, anything else to add before we uh, get going on that? Yeah, I'm just going to clean up. You know, there's a couple ways you go about it. You could do cam bearings first, tape up later. But in this case, we're going to do cam bearings after tape up the block. But we'll get it on the engine stand after we get some of this back stuff plugged up because it's kind of hard to get to. And we'll get her mounted. And all the surfaces we care about will get taped off because, you know, you don't want to... I believe me, I've seen guys, you know, you've seen engines that tear them down and you'll see paint in the valley. Mm -hmm. You'll see paint where the head gas, I just, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Know, it's like drives you nuts. Yeah, well, that's so, definitely so. not good. Yeah, <laughs> no. Now, the factory goes through a different process, so yes, you will see, but that, you, you play hell getting that off, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll get it all prepped up and get it for blue, so. All right. Well, stay tuned for some painting. All right. Thanks.
All right, guys, so as you can see, Chris is a wizard with the spray can, and uh, we've got a beautiful Ford Blue block here in front of us, uh, and uh, we're ready for the next step, which is going to be the can bearing install, and uh, you know, Durban was kind enough to supply us with some awesome can bearings. So, Chris, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about, you know, next what we're going to be doing here next steps. Yeah, absolutely. So, now that paint's done, we're just set up on, this is just a nice simple car to use for when you take your can bearings and you have to pile them in too, because it is a press fit. So, got to use the right tools and be able to comfortably get them lined up with each of the holes, okay, for your oiling. So, we're going to do that, and then we're going to put the rest of the block kit and all the plugs and get it all ready, so that way we can put it on our engine stand, and then we can just start all of our pre-assembly yeah. inspection and process, right? The real fun stuff. The real fun stuff, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and of course Durabon, they're, they've been around forever, so it's one of the common cam bearings we use in a lot of engine builds, frankly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's not a complicated process by any means, it's just one of those things you just got to be, take the time and do it, right? you know, and do it right. So. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll get out of your way and let you All right. install these. Cool. Again. Obviously, you just put a little bit of lubricant in here. What's nice is you can actually, and this is no no fancy oil. It's just you know like a 2050 weight oil. Put a little bit of lubricant in here. But if you notice, your cams are laid out in order, right? Side because there's different sizes and thicknesses of the cam shaft or bearing. I'm sorry. So your bearings are laid out in a certain certain area. So you got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to do number one first, and then we're going to come back and do five, four, three, two. So you always pick out number one, and you verify, see they got them numbered, right? So let's look here. We're going to start with number one, and you will see your nice little number on here. So 351 HP-1, 351 HP-1. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Chris is done here with the uh, cam bearing install. Uh, the Durban cam bearings are all in. Got a couple plugs on the block. And uh, Chris, why don't you tell the folks what they can look forward to on the next episode? Yeah, so now we get to have the fun of checking everything out, right? We're gonna mic everything. We're gonna make sure it's all good. We got file fit rings, all that kind of stuff, and kind of get our get everything sort of laid out. So then we can start the assembly process. But first, we gotta check rings and check check yeah. clearances and stuff. So yeah, that'll be next. So we'll do that. So yeah, Chris will be making sure everything's uh, ready to go, and then we'll be doing some of the bottom end assembly. So make sure you guys are staying tuned. 
If you guys want to enter to win this small block board, make sure you're checking out this link right here on the screen. And uh, as always, we want to thank our component partners for uh, helping us out with the build. And we appreciate you all watching. We'll see you next time.